At the end of every unit, your teacher has a chance to teach a lesson about others in context to enhance. But what do you suppose a teacher has a do? He skips a lesson and makes us make a digital LEQ. LEQ should need historical evidence, reason that can cooperate and advance. A complex thesis Dr. Irish would admire. And then we drop the screencast like a single that is fire. Student created screencast for you to like, subscribe, and share. We know you've had all the green and Heimler that you can bear. If we have the most used by 10 on the fifth day, we earn 500 bonus points with guarantees in A. Without much more than fair or ado, we present to you our digital LEQ. Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing the levels of centralization between Song China and the Avisa Caliphate. This presentation is brought to you by Nina, Tylea, Jordan, and Enrique. We have three big ideas. The first one, how did centralization affect both Song China and the Absa Caliphate's relationship with religion? Two, in what ways did centralization affect the militaries of Song China and the Absa Caliphate? And three, how did a difference in centralization affect the formation of the bureaucratic structures of Song China and the Absa Caliphate? Please keep these questions in mind. You should be able to answer these questions by the end of the presentation. The prompt that we chose was in the period from circa 1200 to circa 1450, governments responded to a variety of internal and external factors in order to develop administrative institutions and centralized power. Develop an argument that evaluates the extent to which levels of centralization in Song China and the Absu Caliphate differed in this period. The thesis that we came up with as a group was Due to the Mongols taking over control in both the later Abbasid era and the Southern Song Dynasty, some may say that Song China and the Abbasid Caliphate underwent almost identical processes of centralization. However, both dynasties contrast one another through their different religions, military structure, and their individual bureaucratic organizations. Therefore, both dynasties are unique from each other, despite their many parallels. To provide some contact, context, Song China experienced three shifts of power, and the Abbasid Caliphate experienced two shifts of power. After being fragmented by the Southern Song, Song China worked to reunify as a whole through forming a centralized bureaucracy staffed by scholar civilians as officials. The Abbasids kept many Umayyad ideas, improving and reissuing a lot of their practices and beliefs. As a result, the government landscape has, had been made into an inc inclusive cosmopolitan capital city. Our first main point is religion. Religion was highly incorporated into the governments and societies of both Song China and Abbasid Caliphate. At this time, Neo-Confucianism, which is a mix of Taoism and Buddhism, and also Confucianism, was the most relevant religion and belief system in Song China. In this way, religion and government interrelate with one another due to the Neo-Confucian teachings, which influenced the civil service exam, the identity of scholar official class, and more, which both had a major role in government. As for the people of Abbasid Caliphate, they practiced Islam and followed the Islamic piety. As the third caliphate to succeed the prophet Muhammad, Abbasid Caliphate was extremely religious and was built on the foundation of Islam. This resulted in the governments of both Song China and Abbasid Caliphate being formed differently according to their religion and beliefs, which contributed to their unique government centralizations. Here are three pictures that represent the different religions in Song China and Abbasid Caliphate. The picture on your left and the picture in the middle are an illustration and statue of Confucius, and the picture to the right is a representation of the golden age of Islam. These pictures show the two major religions and philosophies that impacted the Song and Abbasid governments. Scholars living in Baghdad during the Abbasid Caliphate contributed to the preservation of existing knowledge about philosophy, astronomy, medicine, and many other disciplines. In China, the philosophy of Confucianism was very popular and quickly spread, later transforming into Neo-Confucianism. The first two pictures represent Confucius. He established ethical, moral, social, and political standards that formed a fundamental way of life known as Confucianism in China. Neo-Confucianism influenced the government through the teachings of Confucius, especially regarding civil service exams, civilian scholar officials, politics, and more. The second picture represents the golden age of Islam in Abbasid Caliphate in which the economy, culture, and sciences all flourished. Their Islamic lifestyle heavily impacted their government and decisions. These pictures were meant to offer a visual of the important religions and philosophies of Song China and Abbasid Caliphate, whose religions had an impact on their society and government. Our next main topic point is each military. The Abbasid Caliphate 
was very disorderly in its military institution. By being inclusive, their militia was inconsistent in its demographic. The fragmented demographic of the military saw several robust conquests as well as severe internal conflicts nearly leading to their demise. With the Abbasid government choosing to not force Islamic beliefs on its military, a sense of pride could not be formed in many of its people. Song China had a naval assembled military power. Its institutions were based more on defense, lacking offensive prowess. The focus on defense led to less offense-related victories and powerful foes taking away the land once conquered by Song China. Their military consisted of soldiers from various social classes and professional backgrounds. Song China's government struggled to financially maintain a reasoning and analysis. The historical situation, the Abbasid Caliphate did not require militiamen to be Islamic or Muslim. So the image shows a mixed bag in the Abbasid army. This is a sketch of a Song China era naval ship visualizes a part of the military. Through a centralized government, the Abbasids did not exclude different persons in their beliefs, which had transferred over to their military institutions. The Abbasid military would therefore include anyone in their ranks with no exclusions. Song China's centralist government collectively decided on a Navy focused military and had opted to directly hire military officials, which shows that Song government had directly influenced the military structure with full support. From the image of the Abbasid army, the lack of uniformity helps emphasize the inclusion but disorganization of the Abbasid military. By looking at the naval ship sketch, the amount of detail of the structure helps visualize the time and care Song China put into its naval fleet. Our last main talking point is of the bureaucracies. The dynasties had their own bureaucratic structures with their own purpose, goals, and outcomes. Song China built a centralized system with civilian scholar officials. The overwhelming civilian rule led to more concentration of power in the emperor and his palace bureaucracy. The bureaucracy had an economy that interacted with commercial, manufacturing, and administrative centers. Overall, the region was mostly ruled over by a bureaucracy that underwent competitive exams focused on Confucian texts. Strict regulations were made in order to prevent loss of power in the central government. The Abbasid Caliphate built a strong administration which helped usher in a new era of reform by supporting non-Arab Muslims and making its capital in Baghdad. The position of Pfizer and Amir were created to delegate the bureaucratic central authority. There were three main bureaus, chancery, taxation, and disbursement, which covered most of the government, and those bureaus were also expanded. There were a diverse set of bureaucrats meant to include the non-Arabs once excluded before. The bureaucratic examples effectively demonstrate the centralization that took place in each government, one seeing the focus on power while the other seeing focus on reform. Reasoning and analysis. The historical situation is the formation of the bureaucracies of each government. The pictures depict part of the bureaucracy, the Song China scholar, and the interaction between the caliph and the bureaucrats, with the third picture specifically representing monarchy. The monarchs and the bureaucrats had an important role in the government and centralization as they were the ones with power. The bureaucrats ran most of the political organizations, for example, taxation, and the reigning monarchs, the caliph and the emperor, had more symbolic roles. This is a clear portrayal of the levels of centralization by showing the roles that important people had in government, whose decisions affected what happened in the dynasty. The picture on the left helps to visualize a Song China official who were important members of Song China's government and bureaucracy. The second picture in the middle shows the caliph and the bureaucrats who were the top people in the Abbasid Caliphate government and bureaucracy. The third picture on the right represents represents the monarchy that each dynasty had. Our next slide is our theme analysis slide. We saw three themes, three prevalent themes throughout this topic. So for theme two, cultural developments and interactions, both Song China and the Abbasid Caliphate had their own ideas, beliefs, and religions that they went by, thus creating their own distinct societies. Theme three, governance. Both governments built their own administrations to go with their dynamic monarchies. Theme five, social interactions and organizations. Both Song China and the Abbasid Caliphate were centralized to a degree and had central religions that heavily influenced their social, political, economic, and cultural norms. Circling back to our big ideas. Number one, how did centralization affect both Song China and the Abbasid Caliphate's relationship with religion? Song China's previous religions, Buddhism and Taoism, merged to create Neo-Confucianism, which became practiced by most of East Asia. This centralization of religion influenced the way that rulers and other people in power made decisions, thus creating the scholar, official class, civil service exam, and more. Since being built upon the foundation of Islam, the Abbasid Caliphate's centralized understanding of religion contributed to their uniformity in practicing Islam and extreme religious behaviors. Number two, in what ways did centralization affect their militaries of Song China and the Abbasid Caliphate? Song China's military was centralized enough to establish an organized force. However, they were not organized enough to have balance of offense and defense, which often led to their losses in war. 
The Abbasid Caliphate's military was very inclusive, and as a result, it lacked consistency. The military also saw many internal and external conflicts as a result of their dysfunction. Number three, how did a difference in centralization affect the formation of the bureaucratic structures in Song China and the Abbasid Caliphate? Song China chose to create a centralized system of civilian scholar officials, which led to higher concentration of power for the emperor. They were also able to form strict regulations that were made in order to prevent loss of power in the central government. The Abbasid Caliphate strengthened their administration as, and as a result, they began to accept and support non-Arab Muslims, which led to a population increase in the capital of Baghdad. Here's our additional sources slide. We have come to the conclusion of our presentation, so thank you all for watching and listening.